Okay, so let's jump into today's video with some Among Us VR on the Pico 4. The question is, is it compatible? Does it work well? What are the best ways to optimize the graphics and make sure that it works smoothly with the Pico 4? Now, Among Us VR is a party game of teamwork and betrayal. Grab your crew and headset and launch into the VR version of this hit multiplayer as you can play from 4 up to 10 people and by the way i would like to welcome you back to vr essentials where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality we do have a new feature where you can now join as a member and get exclusive tips tricks and perks as well as support from me if you have any queries about your pico 4 or your hp reverb d2 or virtual reality there are a few ways that you could use among us vr version with the pico 4 the first one would be to use virtual desktop and both download it either on Steam VR or download it if you're a Quest user and you have a Pico 4 on your Oculus Rift store. If it allows you, of course, not to have to do a double purchase. However, there are some pitfalls and I'm going to go through this with you right now. But first, I do want to mention that the graphics inside a virtual desktop are absolutely super smooth. This is not an app that requires a lot of RAM power from your computer. All the shaders and everything seem to be coming directly from the actual game engine itself. Doesn't seem to be a lot of customized, you know, images uploaded and all these kind of different things, which really makes super smooth gameplay. And also when you're walking around, there's no motion sickness or jagged edges anywhere. So it's very, very comfortable, I would say, for first time VR users. The animations in between scenes and also all the pop-ups and text, everything is super crisp and clear and just very cute you really get a great sense of warmth and positivity inside of this game after you load it up for the first time now just uh, for the purpose of this video to let you know that i am running a wi-fi 5 router that is positioned about 1.5 meters away from me for the entire testing of all the various different tech that we'll be using in today's video and we're also using the super sampling on steam vr at 100 percent which is slightly above the actual resolution of the Pico 4 lenses, which are 2160 by 2160 per eye. We're also running at 90 hertz refresh rate, both on virtual desktop, as well as the virtual streaming assistant for the wireless and also USB-C tethered experience. However, there are some pitfalls when using virtual desktop, and this is really where it's gonna shine in the future when the updates come through. The first thing is that when you're actually in the game, you're always gonna have to turn on some kind of pop-up that comes up on the actual computer itself telling you if it's okay to run something from oculus or rather so this is something that can be a little bit frustrating because you have to remove your headset each time click on the actual pop-up and then the game will load inside of virtual reality immersing you at the main menu there are many of other pitfalls when using virtual desktop and we will go through this in just a moment and compare it when using the free version of the virtual assistant that is provided by the Pico 4. But first, let's talk about the first impressions. The moment that you're into the main menu is pretty cool. You have the characters of Among Us just floating around randomly in different positions, which I think changes every time you go into the game. And they will then ask you to input your birthday, which they can then record down and use it to, it seems to put you in a room that's more relevant to your age group. However, the only annoying thing is that every single time you exit the game and you go back in, they keep asking you to put your birthday again. So both on the flip side, you know, the positive side is good because per perhaps they're not using or recording your data. But on the other side, it is inconvenient too because you have to keep putting it every single time. I didn't notice, however, that, you know, I did do testing with putting 1980 or 1995, just different age groups. I went even as far as 1960. And I was more or less put with the same age group every single time. I think you'll find that most people who use this game are going to be millennials or upper Gen Z. So anything between the age of 13 up to about, I would say, 19 or 20 year olds. I haven't yet encountered anyone who is 30 and above. The settings are pretty standard. You can basically customize certain things, for example, blinders. If you're new to VR and you're afraid of motion sickness, for example, you can have those. If you're more used to VR, you can take them off. You can also decide whether you want to move around using your head or whether you want to use your arm. There seems to be a little issue though inside of the data tab, where basically this is where you can choose various different things. For example, 
data collection info, privacy policy, terms of use. And when you click on one, what will happen is that they will actually open a tab on your computer when you're using, uh, you know, of course, the streaming to the PC VR, uh, which means that basically the moment that it opens, you won't be able to use anything inside of the game. You'll lose the controls altogether and you might think to yourself, what's going on? All you have to do is go back to computer, close the window, then make sure that your Among Us window is open and then you'll be able to navigate again inside of the game itself. Now do note that if you are going to be using virtual desktop, you can change, of course, all the various different audio settings inside of the game. But with virtual desktop, the microphone doesn't yet at this time of the recording work with the actual Among Us in the Pico 4 for the VR version. So this is something to take note and hopefully in future updates, they will be able to fix this. Among Us VR also enables you to customize your character inside of the game. The only thing is you can customize, however, are the colors and also the hats that you wear on top of your head. The colors, however, are dependent on whether you're hosting or you've been hosted in another room. If you're hosting yourself, then you choose whatever color it will keep to you. If you go into someone else's room, however, if the color is not you know, available, they will assign a random color to you. But what won't change is the hat. The choices at this moment in time are a little bit limited, but there are good fun and quite funky to be honest with you. It's possible in the future they might have a credit system or whatever and then we'll be able to purchase whatever it might be in order to further the customization. Now when using virtual desktop there are more issues that occur and I will bring you through these so do stay tuned for the rest of the video. But first there are other things that you can do. You can for example host your own room with your own name so that's pretty cool and then you can send the code back to your friends or your teammates or your family to play together and of course you can join other people's rooms as well however i did find that during the gameplay there were issues with connecting to servers i would say that 50 percent of the time the server would just keep disconnecting all the time i'm not quite sure if this is an issue with standalones as well please do leave a comment if you are coming from a quest 2 or you know because that is the only other standalone headset available with the game or whether you're using another pc vr headset hooked up to Steam VR with Among Us or you're using the Rift version. If you have any disconnecting to the server issues, please leave a comment before describing a little bit more about the issues that I had when using a virtual desktop compared to using the Pico free version of the wireless assistant, both with the tethered version and also the wireless version. I just want to let you know that, you know, the gameplay is very smooth. The locomotion is very, very nice. Just right, I would say, in terms of the speed. It does feel like you're running around, I have to admit, inside of this gigantic and really cool spaceship, but it doesn't give me any motion sickness. Perhaps if you're new to VR, do leave a comment below and let us know if you wish that it was a bit slower. But for me, it's a good pace. Among Us VR also has a map that is very intuitive and works very well with the Pico 4. Although, as I said, there are some issues with virtual desktop and we will go into this very, very briefly, very soon. The first thing is that you are going to be able to know where you are in the spaceship when the map is enabled and you can see it as a pop-up in front of you both by turning the controller you'll see a little arrow or if you move your body physically it will also tell you which direction that you're facing inside of the map which is very useful. You'll also be able to see all the other players that are in the same level with you and be able to ban them or kick them or whatever it might be. I, I'm not quite sure if it just mutes them or if it actually kicks them out of the room. I would have to do more experimentation there. And there are also a whole bunch of different little text bits which you can click on and then it will send a message automatically inside of the chat. So virtual desktop, just so you know, does need to have some updates when it comes to the controller bindings because basically you will not be able at the time of this recording anyway, turn right and left by using the right thumbstick of your Pico 4 controller. If you, however, hit the up direction or the down direction on the right thumbstick, it will then go left and right, which is very inconvenient and just very, very strange. I did try to go inside of Steam VR, change all the various different bindings, edit bindings, and just nothing worked at this moment in time. So do hit you know the notification bell after you subscribe as once the update has been made i will do a new video and you can be informed of this video and also do join the pico xr discord server as well i will put a link below so potentially when the update is done or if there's a solution found 
then you can also find it there as well as on my Twitter at VR Essentials Numerical One. I am happy to report, however, that if you are using the free version of the virtual assistant that is provided by Pico, both for the wireless Wi-Fi and also the USB 3.0 option that the actual microphone does work and people will be able to hear you. However, do make sure when you go to the settings that you enable the microphone here because if it's disabled, it will not work. Of course, they will not be able to hear you. And by the way, you can also adjust the audio delay. I personally leave it at 30 seconds or sorry, micro milliseconds, which is absolutely fine. I also, for the purpose of this video, have my graphics set to 90 Hertz and also HD for both. And do make sure you hit on save up here and not close from here. Otherwise, it is possible that your settings will not be safe. The graphics using the USB 3.0 tethered experience with the Pico 4 virtual assistant, I have to say are very good and compared to virtual desktop are more or less, I would say, absolutely the same. I don't see any compression in, you know, darker areas or in the blacks. They're actually very smooth, very good. The blooms, the blurs, the fogs, you know, all these kind of different effects are very crisp and sharp. Also, all the letters and the fonts and everything is absolutely the same as virtual desktop. However, do note that if you are using a cable creations extension cable, it doesn't seem to be, you know, providing more battery life to the actual Pico, even though it is plugged into the computer as it still will last about two hours long. However, if I just have my anchor cable without the cable creations extension, even though it is only 1.5 meters, which is a little bit inconvenient, but thank God Among Us VR with the Pico 4 is a good sitting experience. So you could be by your computer if you wanted to, then, you know, the battery life will last an extra couple of hours as it will trickle much slower. So here's a little test using the wireless this time virtual assistant by Pico 4, which is provided completely free. And you can download at the Pico XR website, of course, where I just got caught as an imposter, but I'm trying to pretend that perhaps it's someone else and saving my skin. Let's listen on. I think it's light orange. You have I think it's this guy here, this guy here. I think that's who it is. No, nah, you have, you have murder on your mind. Look at that hat. Anyone with a hat like that must no, be an imposter. No, no, no I might have a knife under like here, that, but you murdered him. No, look at the look on your face. Look at the look. Look at the look on your face, mate. Mate, mate, mate. Look at the look on your face. Everybody, shut up. It's you, okay? It's you. It's orange. Watashi, 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 Watashi wa Nihongo des. Watashi wa Nihongo des. I think it's yellow. Uh, it shut must up. be yellow. Uh, pink wants to say something. It's dark yellow. The gameplay with the wireless streaming assistant by Pico 4 is equally as good as I would say with virtual desktop, although there are definitely some compromises in the graphics with much more compression compared to virtual desktop. Do remember that when I'm running virtual desktop, I do running at 150 Mbps compared to Pico 4, which is probably around the 40s or the 60s because when I bring down the virtual desktop to around that kind of compression, then it will be comparable at those settings. But I have to say that the gameplay itself is tremendously good fun. A lot of good people in there and a lot of good jokes, especially when you are the imposter and everybody is kind of like trying to vote against you and you're trying to save your skin, then that's where you can, you know, kind of stir the pot a little bit and try to see whether someone else could be eliminated but the actual tasks inside of the actual spaceship whilst you're playing with everybody else, regardless if you're the imposter or if you're a crewmate, there's a lot of different things to be doing there, a lot of good hide and seek and a lot of good relationship building with all the various different gamers who actually join among us inside of VR. There's no details at this moment in time that I have personally found at the recording date of this video that talks about potentially crossplay with mobile phone or, or Apple kind of iPad users or tablet users. So at this moment in time, you do need a VR headset in order to go inside to be able to play the game. So it's just a shame to be honest with you that at the moment in time, there's so many issues with the servers for me personally, using the wireless streaming to the PC or using, you know, the cable itself, the actual PC VR option is just disconnecting me. But again, leave a comment below. Let us know if coming from a Quest point of view, you have the same issues or whether it's always smooth for you and you never get disconnected from the server. 
because personally speaking, I have requested a refund from Steam, even though $10 is actually very good value for money for this game, to be honest with you. It is really good fun. It's definitely not a graphics issue, even using the wireless option with the free version of the Virtual Assistant by Pico4, I'd be definitely happy. And by the time some of you will be watching this video, then of course, Virtual Desktop's update will be made and then you won't have any issues with the controllers and other various different things inside of the game, making the graphics even much, much better. Do leave a comment below. Let us know if you happen to use your Pico 4 with the Oculus Rift Store and Virtual Desktop. I'd love to know if you have any of the same or similar issues, any of them um, that I had with the Steam VR mode on Virtual Desktop. But other than that, yeah, the community is definitely going to be building. Of course, at the moment, there aren't billions of people or tens of millions of people inside of VR, but that's just a matter of time. And of course, when Virtual Desktop does the update with everything, you're going to have much better graphic quality inside as well with your Pico 4. Although by then it's possible that Pico will give you a good run for its money as the Virtual Desktop wireless option is completely free and will undoubtedly become better as well. Guys, do be part of the notification squad after you subscribe so you are notified the moment that I upload cool new helpful videos like this one and also hit the join button so you are part of the membership squad, membership squad excuse me, and enjoy exclusive cool perks from the channel as you could also help the channel of course so you can purchase more cool gear and like graphics cards and lights and microphones and all this kind of stuff. All right, until next time, do hit this video on this side or the video on that side. Take it easy. It's been lovely spending some time with you. Really had a good time here. Until next time, as I said, take it easy. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye for now. I do get lost sometimes when I say stuff. <laughs> Bye for now guys. Bye.